the capacity for wonder, the power to grow, to transform. If we choose to embrace the common thread within us, we begin to bravely forge our own unique path. That we may never fully understand our path doesn't matter. What matters is what we all share, a search for more. Along the way, we will need nourishment for our mind, body, and soul. We will need a companion, an aid, a light for our path. This is Gaia's role, the nurturer, the light bearer, the friend, the guide, the great facilitator of a higher collective consciousness. Oh man, I'm anxious about doing this. I'm kind of like uh, nervous, I'm not gonna do it right. This is such an important, like a uh, viable understanding about moving your emotion, emotional healing, emotional release, releasing, releasing what has been imprisoned. That, that's such an important work. Uh, this whole world is like some kind of like a prison where you know, you have all these laws and rules and regulations and you can't move, you can't speak, you can't, you know, express, you can't be creative, you know? And yet, when somebody really feels the blues, they write blues songs and they sing the blues and that becomes nourishment for generations. So all creativity comes from emotions. Every writer, when a writer has had tragedy or or has had traumas in his life, and, the, and you know the boy meets girl, and they lose each other, and they find each other. The, you know every story, is, it comes from those emotions. You know the uh, the color and quality, and the power, and the and the breadth and the width of your life is emotional. Life is vibration, and emotions are are life in its most vibrant form. So, you know, and and then what is imprisoning? Denying those emotions is, is words, words that are people, spoke words, did things, traumatized. Stop, don't, quit, you're being too emotional, you're being too loud, you're being too messy, you're being too crazy, you're being too little, you're being too, too childlike, you're being too much of a baby, words. And you suppress and you suppress and we suppress our feelings to where there's no us anymore. We become, like I said, frauds. We become fake now. That's not who we are. We are full spectrum human beings. So what happens is a little small person inside of you stops growing. You stop growing. And you become an infant emotionally suppressed. An infant with duct tape over their mouth, over their eyes. So we're not uh, there's very few adults who are adults. If you take a, if you take a wolf pup and you grow, raise it in a house, okay, and you give it love and uh, be a little good little wolf, it'll never become a wolf. Never become a wolf. It'll be your pet. It'll be a puppy its whole life. But when the wolf is let free, when a wolf is born free, living in the wild, it becomes a wolf. Yeah, a freedom. Not conditioned, not trained, not potty trained. So, human beings are very rarely a human being. They're, they're babies in, in grown-ups' bodies, suppressing their emotions. So many gifts for this. And it's sad because, you know, that's like against God. Oh, don't be angry. That's not spiritual. Don't, don't grieve. That's, you know, that's not who you know. That is so... We're told not to grieve, not to be angry, not to be afraid. Or we can be afraid. The government will love to make you afraid. Be afraid, be afraid, be afraid until all you are is this like burnt nerve of a of frazzled fear. That's not who you are. And everybody, it's all coming from the outside. You should do this and you should do that and you should do this. And these are all judgments and things that limit you. So the need for emotional release, to clear the deck, to find your wisdom, to find your truth, to find your core, and let that breathe up and become alive again. The more vibration you have, the more life you have. Life is vibration. 
and vibration in, in the human body is noisy. It is life. It is, it is sounds coming out of your mouth. In this culture, we don't have that. You know, we don't have grief rituals. We don't have rage rituals. We don't have terror rituals. We don't have war rituals to allow us to vibrate those feelings back into, to, to, to become an adult, just to have full spectrum of all the emotions. And yes, it's messy. It's messy. So there's a lot of judgment. Oh, it's, you're being messy, you're being silly, you're being childish, you're being blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's messy. But being born again into the full adultness of who you are is messy. To suppress your feelings and have them come out beyond your control, that's very messy. It's violence, terrible. To uh, live in constant fear of not saying or not expressing or not being able, you know, being a, a meek little mouse, that's pretty messy. You know what I mean? It's far better to lose control and allow the emotional expression to happen than it is to contain your emotions for your whole life. Because emotional emotions is where you connect people, and then, and then there's this judgment of, oh, if you're angry, that's not love, and oh, if you're if you're afraid, that's not love. You should only be loving. I got news for you: emotional release is the most loving thing you can do in your life. It's it's the most personal loving thing. It's the most loving thing you can do for the world. It's the most loving thing you can do for your family. And I'll tell you how. Why? Terror. Oh God, what is I'm afraid? Tear. A little child walks in the street, a toddler, and the mom immediately goes into terror. She goes into terror and runs after that child and grabs that child out of the street. Why? Because that is pure, concentrated love to protect her child. That is love. That is powerful. That's love that you don't feel every day. That terror of protect save, take to a place of safety, yeah? Fear is the same way, so fear and terror is love, powerful, powerful love, protect. And, and if you could take that same mother or father and somebody was to abuse your child or to, uh, or to uh, threaten you, you're gonna get rage, you're gonna get rage. You might get a punch in the face too, but you're gonna get rage. So you're messing with somebody's child, you're gonna get rage. And what does rage say? Stop hurting. Stop doing that. You're not allowed to hurt my child. You're not allowed to, to violate me. That's rage. Self-love. I love myself and I won't let you hurt me. I love my children and I won't let you hurt them. Rage. And what, what do we have? We don't have rage in America. in America. We have like, oh, well, I guess America has just bombed another country. And, well, that's, you know, that's terrible. You know, that's, that's just, we don't have rage, you know. The only rage you see is for crazy people in the street who have nothing to lose. And then they move their emotions all day long. They're, they're, maybe, they're, they're, more, they're more sane. The crazy people raging in the street are more sane than the people who are like watching death and destruction and chemtrails and saying, oh, geez, that's terrible. I think we should rally against that. We should, I should write something on Facebook. Emotionally dead. Yeah? Immature, emotionally dead zombies because we don't have full access to all of, our, all of our emotions. And that is our culture, but it's not the culture of this world. In this world, they, every culture, including the wet Europeans, we, at one time we had, we had songs and dance for weddings, we had songs and dance for funerals, we had we had rituals for, uh, you know, crops, and we had, you know, and when we moved our emotions for a fear and <coughs> prayer. I mean, how can you pray? <coughs> You're sitting on all this trauma and grief and sorrow that's unexpressed, and then you turn around and go, I love you, God. It's totally fake. That's not authentic. You're dying inside and you're saying, well, maybe if I just love Jesus a little more or Muhammad a little more, you know, how can that little squeaky Mickey Mouse voice have any connection to God when, you, when you're in trauma, or you're suppressed, or you don't even have access to the fullness of who you are? Remember the first commandment, full heart, full mind, full body, and full soul. 
of your soul is gone and you have no power, you have no wisdom, you have no voice. Yeah, emotional releases. There is the most loving thing you can do for yourself. An emotional balance that comes, emotional balance comes after emotional release. And after that is love, okay? Because anger and fear, right? And in the middle is love, right? You move your anger, it has to go back to, the, to love. You, move, you have that intense fear, and it goes back to love. So love always increases. Whether it's anger or fear or grief or terror or rage or sorrow or depression, when you do it and then you move through the whole spectrum of what it is to do, to, to feel, it always comes back to more love. An increase in the vibration of love in your life. That's what happens. And we don't love ourselves. We don't love ourselves. We only love the image that we've created. The image of Mr. Nice or Mr. Tough Guy or Mr. Miss, you know, Sexy or whatever. That's not, that's not us. We're a full spectrum, much huger, massive, gigantic spirits compressed into only being able to act sexual, or only being able to act cool, or only being able to act tough, or only be able to act intellectual, or only be able to act smooth and suave. That's not who we are. That's just like a little, the cartoon character, the role of the cartoon character, and that's a fraud. And we have a fraudulent government, fraudulent medicine, fraudulent money, fraudulent, and we buy it because we're frauds. Everybody knows that money is nothing, it's a piece of paper. Oh, it's the paper, it's my, my, my money. It's, it's, you see what I'm saying? But it's not that way in the other. Whenever you go around the world, cultures have ways of expressing emotions. And I want to say just a, few, a little bit about um, where and how, you know, Never the, the rules of language lessons are harder. No emotional release face to face with another person. It is not about them. It's not from the skin out. It's from the skin in. So do not argue with your mom, your dad. Do not argue with your boyfriend, husband, and wife. Do not argue with your kids. Do not argue with your boss. No face to face. Not not ever. Not once ever is that needed in to emotional healing work. That's violent, stupid, destructive, and self sabotaging heal from the skin in. You want to connect to your mom or your boss or your kids? Skin in. Skin in. That's the way to do it. The other, the other rule is don't break anything. You do not have to break anything. You don't have to break your car, wreck your car, rip your clothes. You don't have to do any, you don't have to rip your furniture. You don't have to do that. Just express fully and as deeply as you can. And then find the judgments and denial and release those. Back and forth and back and forth. Feel thankful for every time you do, because every time you do, that's a, a cork that un, un pops out of the spirit of life. That's a great celebration. It's a great. It's like holy in some ways, because it makes you whole. That's why it's holy. Okay, so no face to face. Uh, no. Uh, You know, arguing with anybody face to face or anything like that. Don't don't do that. And express as fully as you can. Don't break anything. Okay. And don't hurt yourself. Okay. It's two things. Don't hurt yourself. No face to face. Now, if you're in a violent, wild relationship with somebody, make a rule in your house. Make a rule in your house that there's no face to face. If you get it, if you're the kind of person, husband and wife stuff, even parents and kids stuff. You being the responsible person who's healing yourself, you go into another room and then you let them have it. They will hear you through the wall. And the effect, but the effect is that you're not angry at them. You're angry at what was traumatized you, what hurt you inside of you. It's inside you, okay? They'll hear it. And also they'll, they'll have a, they, they can have that separation of he's, he's moving his stuff or she's moving her stuff. You know, that's how it works. Not face to face. Because you get face to face, you get loaded up. They get loaded up, you get loaded up, and then it can explode into violent arcing, which is sometimes violent and brutal. 
I mean, there's a lot of places you can do it. Like I said, you can do it at house in your house with your phone with your uh, stereo on. Uh, and I'm going to show you a few other different ways of doing it. You can do it in public. You can literally actually go down, walk down the street somewhere, go someplace that nobody knows you, and you can move your emotions all you want on the street. And all they'll say about you is, oh, that person's crazy. But you're crazy like a fox. You're smart like a fox. Or you can go to a public park, or you can go to a beach and scream in the river, or, or in the water, or river, or water, or whatever. That, you can, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. You can... Uh, some friend that might have a warehouse or somebody might have a, a, a conference room that they're not using at night or a church, you know, that's a good place if, the, if you can get a couple of people together and say, let's, we want to do this emotional healing work and so there's a, you know, you find your place. Remove the judgments that says there's no place to do it. There is places to do it. And uh, so the first little clip I'm going to show you is uh, Sabonafu. She is an uh, African, uh, sort of like a shaman, healer, wise woman. And uh, she, she, I'm just going to show you a little clip of, of her understandings of the importance of doing emotional healing work, emotional release work, crying, grieving, shouting, and how the whole, the whole community is behind that in, in Africa uh, it's just so it's just so important and we don't have that here we don't have the acceptance you know if you're grieving somebody will like pull you out of it so stop grieving right if you're angry oh dear, don't be angry be just calm down 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 yeah no acceptance for but other other countries have that acceptance and uh, Africa is the mother country, and they did a lot of things right in terms of keeping an emotional balance in their community. So as you begin to do this separation, you will find it very emotional. But it is okay for those emotions to be there. Let your tears flow because that's one of the gifts you can give to yourself. A lot of us are afraid of emotion. We have a fear of grief because as children we have been taught that it is not okay to share our emotion. But let's stop and think about it. If we weren't supposed to feel, would we have feeling? If we were supposed to cry, would we have tears? In the Dagra tradition, it is very natural for people to cry. In fact, a person who does not cry is looked at as a time bomb for the simple reason that when we do not release our emotions, we allow ourselves to harbor negative emotions. But the truth is that we are born feeling we are born crying have you ever seen anyone teach a child how to cry we know when we feel pain to release with tears and so the first thing we do when we come out is to scream to announce ourselves it is a way for us to state ourselves and to let the world know i am alive and by the same token, when we cry, we are in fact re-inviting life back into our body and into our spirit. And it is also very important to remember that when we see people who are feeling or who are grieving, in a healthy way that is, that we never actually question it. Have you ever seen someone who is crying? Have you ever gone and touched with tears and asked them, what do these tears mean? Have you ever wondered why you cry? Well, there are many reasons why we cry. In fact, we can maybe go on forever as to why we cry. But the natural law of nature wants us that when we feel pain 
when we feel hurt just like when you holding a container that is broken that whatever that container was holding is going to start to leak that when we feel pain too that we are going to start to basically release something that will act as a way of cleansing the part of us of purifying the part of us that has been hurt and so tears have a reason to be it is not something we should be afraid of it is something in fact we should be proud of Dagger people are continuously expressing their emotions and the expression of emotion comes in many different ways it comes through the physical crying through the sharing of laughters in fact it is said that grief and joy walk hand in hand and you cannot have one without the other and so being a woman in the dagger village meant letting the dam of your grief continuously flow in fact there is a grief ritual that is always happening somewhere in the tribe and it is always a way for people to not only allow the part of them that have been hurt but it is also a way of acknowledging that something else is being born within the self because grief is a doorway to healing it is also a doorway to accessing one's power it is also a way for us to get into our creativity and so grief is an important part of dagger people's life and we cannot go on with our life or imagine our life without the expression of grief in fact there are times when the only thing that can help you is grief so grief is sometimes the only medicine that will appease your spirit and your aching soul even science has been now talking more and more about the importance of grieving in our life because without grief something in us not only die but we also begin to turn our positive emotions into toxicity in the dagger culture when grief is not released it is said to create illnesses in one's body it is said to for instance create things as simple as a cold ulcers cancer and different things like that and so while you are sitting thinking wow do i really need to grieve the answer is yes you absolutely need to grieve you can remember when you were a child how good it felt to have grieved after you have felt pain how relaxed you become because there is something that you have just released which is toxicity and the toxicity of grief is not something that we can actually digest just like when we breathe out the carbon monoxide it is not something that is good for our body or our system but for the trees it is something absolutely marvelous it is turned back to oxygen for us by the same token when we grieve we release negative things that allow us to have good energies to actually be calm relax to experience joy and to be peaceful genuine peace many time people always wonder why i have a smile on my face and they're often shocked to hear that i am smiling because i just had a grief session they find it very strange but you know what when you hold too much grief you cannot actually smile you cannot have even a genuine laughter maybe you can say that it's because i come from a culture that grieves a lot but i know for a fact working with people all around the world on the theme of grief and grieving people definitely shift into a different place of their life when they have been able to release their grief they become a new person something toxic has been released and life is coming back and they can 
in this case, experience true joy. Now let's, uh, let's go from Africa to America and the American Indians. And in this clip, I, I want you just to, to take note, okay, take note that the Indians have been doing this for thousands of years. No telling how many, maybe 15,000 years. And when you, I don't know if you've ever uh, listened to or, or seen, um, you know, their fancy dance or fancy dance or, or a, a powwow, and you wonder, what are they saying? What are the Indians saying when they sing? And what is what's the translation? I actually asked that one time. They're not saying anything. They're not saying anything. They are moving their emotions. It's just a, 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 they're making a sound that carries their emotion. And and again, like in Africa or or a, or any place else, there is dances for the sunrise. There's dances for grief. There's dances for war. It's all done with emotions. It's not done with words. Oh, we're going to go to war. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father, for raising the sun today. Right? No, it's it is uh, just feeling, and then and then then it's in the body. So there's emotional release in your head, and there's emotional release in your heart. There's emotional release in your will, and emotional release in your body. And and the Indians. They get they get dressed up, and they in their body, and and they want to connect to the spirit, and they can connect to the spirit of the earth, of the sun, uh, of creation. Through their emotions and through their intention, they know what their intention is. Their intention is 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 for grief or for or for war or for uh, you know they want they want rain, you know they want to be blessed. You know, or uh, or for healing, yeah. And they move their body. They move their body. Move their body. So it's a, it becomes a dance. And it's, there's no there's no uh, steps to the dance. It is the the feeling, the drums, the feelings, and the body. It's all expressing. And they do it for hours. And the whole tribe will get together and do it. And, and the drummers do it. And after, so when you hear this, when you hear them singing. That's what it is. It's just a sound, and you can do emotional release without words. So there's a lot of words involved with your, you know, in certain state. But you can just do emotional release with ah, toning and ho, oh, 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 you know what I mean? You don't have to. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes it's better not use words. Just let the feelings vibrate and not try to intellectualize them into oh, mom did this or dad did that or you know. Just feel it, just vibrate it out without words. Very, very, very powerful. And there's a whole culture based around this. And, and what, do they ha what happens to them when they're done? They feel connected. They feel connected to their soul. They feel connected to their tribe. They feel connected to the ground, the earth. They're, they're, they're connecting to the earth. You watch them with, the, watch with their footwork. It's, it's always it's like this, to, they, they hit the earth, they touch the earth. They're, they're moving that emotions down into the earth and up into the sky. Very, very powerful. And, they, and this, is, this is part of their culture. That's one reason why they stayed in a culture for so long. And uh, their cultures are strong and their uh, uh, heritage is so strong. So this is in America. We have, uh, and there's hundreds and hundreds of tribes. And each one has a different way of doing it. But it's all the same. It's, it is vibrating, vibrating the feelings that are inside of you and releasing them and allowing it to readjust and then having that gratitude, having that joy, having that creativity, having that connectedness again. American Indians are real men, you know, when they do that. And, and you see them, they, they, do this, they do this from birth. In the mother's womb, the mother will be dancing. In your, in your mother's womb, the mother will be dancing. Yeah. It's completely different than being cut off from emotions and cut off from our deeper self and cut off from nature and cut off from society, cut off from the world. Move your emotions and you get connected again.
So we're gonna go from the American Indians. They're, they're, they're just amazing people, real amazing people. I feel them every time I, every time I see uh, uh, any kind of dance that they do, especially when it's not for the public and it's not fancy dress and it's all celebration and competition. When it is real out in the, out in the earth and in the village, that's what always touches me. I can just feel the drums and I feel the, you can feel the vibration of the emotions going through you. It's very much a uh, cultural thing. But now we're going to go to, to uh, around the world and, and, and down south to New Zealand, to the haka. This is a wedding haka. But haka has been, it, they do it there again. They start doing the haka in, in the womb. The mothers do the haka. And uh, it's, it's a dance of power and vigor and, and uh, authority and, and uh, defiance and and uh, connectedness, you know, and 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 uh, intimidation, yeah. So it came about from this uh, man in history. I don't know, it was 100 years ago, 150 years ago, and the whole tribe had been defeated, and it was like a really bad defeat. So this was the father talking to the son, and uh, in emotional release work. Uh, the son, father, so the son, father, God, right? So when you do an emotion research work, it's like to your about your father. It's your father, and then all men, and then God. And for a woman, it would be for if it was to her husband, it'd be she's moving her rage towards her husband. But it's the same rage that she has for her father, or and then for all men, and then for God. This is the same emotional because it's all the same emotionally. So Hakka's got these two sides to it. One is the father is talking to the son about not being defeated, you know, about pulling your power back up and facing your, your issues. But it also has this overtone of God talking to uh, a defeated, the, the defeated spirit in humans. And uh, that's what makes, and, and it's, these people uh, pull up so much power and so much connectedness and so much love and so much uh, uh, camaraderie, camaraderie and, and brotherhood. So it goes, uh, what's right is always right. That's the first line. And then the chorus goes, indeed, what's right is always right. Ah, yes. Be true to yourself, son. My concerns have been raised about you, so pay attention. What is this problem you've been carrying? How long have you been carrying it? Have you got it right? Let's go on. So son, although it may be difficult for you, and the son, although it seems to be unyielding, no matter how long you reflect on it, the answer to the problem is here inside you. And then the last line is, indeed, indeed. So this is the thing. It's like, we all have problems. The uh, New Zealanders have problems and, and trials and, and, and being and crushed and defeated. But there's this other thing that's just so powerful. It's like, okay, that's, it's inside of you. The answer is always this emotional vibration. And so they pull up the emotional vibration inside of them and, and, and say, and they face their problem. They face their feels. They face their anger. They face their grip, their grief, and they vibrate it out. It's like head on. Whatever this world gives them, it's like I'm giving it right back. That's what all that is. It's like I'm not afraid of you. Ah, right? It's just uh, unimaginably powerful. It's worth really studying and looking deep into uh, or practicing the haka. Uh, so that's a that you can do a whole emotional release just just by doing the haka, and then you know work on each of your issues by doing this dance. They always and it's the same thing with their feet and the, and their body. They're moving their whole body to do haka right. They, you do it until you're exhausted and your, your body sweats and you've, you've used all of your emotional energy on all of your physical energy. Very powerful stuff. It's one of my favorites. And they do it for weddings, they do it for funerals, they do it for war, they do it for 
grief, and they, they actually have a romance kind of a thing that they do with it. So uh, it's not just this kind of like, like a war dance kind of a thing. It, it, they, they use it for their whole, their whole life to uh, whatever you confront, it, the answer lies within. And, the, and, the, and when they're doing it, that answer is this huge emotional power that's vibrating through their body. So enjoy uh, and really f feel what's going on here with the uh, haka. Imagine if you were, uh, you know, at work and they're giving you a hard time at work and you do the haka. You get some respect, that's for sure. <laughs> you might get fired, but you get some respect. Maybe if you did it in the parking lot. Well, anyway, that's New Zealand and our next uh, nation, our next, next uh, origin is in India. And, uh, it was actually in India and it was in the United States too. Uh, a guru by the name of uh, Sri Bhagwan Rajanish, he did this thing called chaotic meditation. And uh, so in India they have, you know, yogas for different things. They have yoga for your body, they have yoga for your spirit, and that's meditation. Uh, they have a logic. A logic, a yoga. Uh, they have chanting yogas and all different, all different kinds. It's like any any aspect of the human condition, they have a yoga for it. And you, you know, it's like all these different ways to achieve God. But there's two big branches. One is the spirit, you know, meditation kind, which is the father energy, and then the other one is the mother energy which is the emotional kind and, that, and so one is just uh, like Raja and the other one is Tantra, Tantra, Tantra Yoga, anything having to do with the emotions and people think of Tantra as uh, oh, sex and stuff like that but actually it's about moving your emotional body and they have a lot of different varieties of that and uh, Bhagwan Rajanish Osho, he uh, sort of looked at the, the human condition and he came up with this meditation but it's, it's so good, so well thought out, and uh, it's so accessible that uh, you can do this meditation uh, when the kids are asleep. You know what I mean? You can do this meditation as like a, in front of anybody because 
you don't have to make a lot of noise. Although m making noise, I would I, it, it was almost ideal as a uh, as a uh, an exercise for like language lessons of the heart. It has like five parts. One is breathing and bouncing. And you breathe. You know, they tell you a special way to breathe and to breathe real heavily and to move your body in sort of like a uh, a free flow a free flow kind of a way. But the important thing is to, to, to disconnect the controlling mechanism of your mind. Disconnect your mind from it and just become the observer. So you're li watching your body breathe and jump and do these things while your emotion, while your mental body is, is separated and observing, not interfering. And then it goes, it's like five parts to it. And, uh, Second part, I think, is where they use, you can use your emotions and they let your, you let, let your body completely go into these chaotic, random, wild movements. It's, and, uh, and you allow it to move you instead of you moving it. And, and again, with the mind observing and not interfering, not trying to make it into a rhythm or trying to make it into a dance, it's just allowing the body and the emotions to move. So powerful. And uh, wonderful, actually, because that allows that allows your emotional body to become to uh, explore all the possibilities, instead of just having to be this little thing you can only use for when you're angry. You can only use for, you know, when you want to win an argument or something, or or uh, you know, or when you have to work hard, you have to like, use your emotions to pump yourself up. Instead of being using your emotional body like some kind of horse to pull your wagon around, you, you use it, you allow it to be what it is, what it wants to be, and it's like sh you shake it all up and let, let it resettle. And then there's another part uh, where you just hold still, and then you hold still, and, and you again you're detached from being swept away by the whole thing, and. Uh, and you observe all the feelings in your body, all the sensations, you know, and, and hear all the words that are coming. Now, to adapt this to right to, to uh, language lessons of the heart, you would be listening for judgments and denials that were coming up because you just moved your body and you moved your emotions in a couple of ways. And, and uh, if there's any pain or trauma or anything like that, it'll have words that come up to it. And then I would say instead of just spending 15 minutes in silence, is use that time to uh, to do judgment denial release. You know, after uh, after you've sort of settled down, and the, here is where you're using your mind as a detective or as a shaman to find out what 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 was the cause of that suppression or what was the cause of that trauma. So uh, that kind of brings us kind of a little bit of around the world. And I could, I could do a whole uh, couple of hours just on uh, in, any one of these, any one of these uh, cultures. And uh, so these are all exercises you can do. These are all th oh, different varieties, different ways of doing emotional release. And I'm going to maybe uh, hopefully do another video on uh, mat work and holotropic breath work. That, there's more to it than there's more. It's not just one way of doing it. There's more, and the, the but the uh, what they call what's called dynamic meditation. This could be done in a workshop setting, you know, and because it's fairly easy to do. You, get, you you direct. You can direct the people, and it's, and it's easy for you to do it. And and you don't have to hide from your kids. Oh God, one of the best gifts you can give your kids is to let them know that you're doing emotional release work. Let them know. Let them hear it. Let them, you know, you go in another room or something or in a garage or wherever you got to go and let them hear it. And why is that the best? Because you're not ashamed, okay? You got beat up in this world and now you're taking care of it. Your children are going to get beat up in this world too. And But for them, they must know by their culture, by their family, that if you get beat up in this world and you get jammed up, that you can do something about it. You can heal yourself. You can vibrate what, what is hurting out and, you know, and make yourself better. What a gift that is. 
instead of the mom being or the dad being all suppressed his whole life, you know, and not able to even say I love you to the kids and, you know, and, and uh, you know, not even smiling or whatever, you know, that's what you send to your kids. Suppress forever till you're dead, you know. No, I got hurt and I'm healing myself. Yeah. What a gift. So your kids are going to get hurt. There's nothing you can do about that. Out in the world, relationships, work, finances, whatever, tragedy, illnesses, whatever it is. To, to let them know that, that if you can, if you're getting hurt or beat up or, or knocked around, like in the haka, you can face it. You can deal with it. You can, there's things to do and you can have that, that uh, ability to, to clean your karma. To heal your karma, you know, and this is what it is: karma going both ways. When you heal yourself, it goes it goes back to your parents because it's working on them. And it goes down into your children. This is like karmically clean to suppress your feelings and and uh, suppress your trauma, suppress your depression, suppress your anxiety. Then that goes on to you know. Now your parents are going to feel guilty because they're a bad parent, and your children are going to like wonder, wonder like. You know, you're, you know, that that's the way it's supposed to be. That's your model of a human. So that's karma going both ways. This is why this works so powerful because you actually can resolve your karmic issues inside you. Karma is nothing more than trauma. Trauma from other lifetimes passed down to you through the generations and from you to the future generations. So whatever you can heal, heals both ways. Osho Dynamic Meditation For this first stage of 10 minutes, Stand with your feet shoulder width apart and knees relaxed and slightly bent. This will help you to stay loose throughout. Make sure you have enough space to allow your whole body to move and really get into the breathing. Keep your mouth closed and breathe fast and deep through the nose. Breathe like bellows, emphasizing the exhalation, the out-breath. and avoid getting into any rhythm. Be total. Don't let up. Allow the energy to build and build. It's important to stay aware in the breathing, to observe from inside as if you are just a spectator, as if everything is happening to somebody else. Allow all your feelings to come out over the next 10 minutes. A little acting can help you to start, and then you will find many emotions surfacing of their own accord. Whatever comes out, anger, sadness, laughter, fear, just let it all erupt through body movements and sound. The feelings will keep changing if you stay open and don't let your mind interfere with what is happening. Be total, but stay conscious, observing from inside. If you can't make noise because of the neighbors, the catharsis is just as effective when you turn the sounds inside, channeling all your feelings into bodily expression. Keep your eyes closed, arms raised, and for the next 10 minutes, jump up and down shouting who as you land on the floor. Keep your knees unlocked so you can land on the flat of your feet. 
Don't hold back. Totally exhaust yourself, but remain aware of everything that is happening inside and outside of you. If physical space makes it impossible to make noise, let the impact of the who move inside soundlessly. Freeze immediately when you hear the stop and for the next 15 minutes remain just like a statue, eyes closed, without adjusting the body in any way at all. From inside, just be a watcher, observing passively any bodily sensations, any thoughts, and any feelings, as well as being aware of anything happening outside you. The first three stages are a preparation for this stage. Still with your eyes closed, for the last stage of 15 minutes, just let the body move into dance as a celebration. Mm -hmm.